All right, guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Josh, and in this video, I'll be talking about dividend investing in New Zealand. Basically, there's a lot of content out there for dividend investing, but none of them really relate to New Zealand. So in this video, I'll be um, going through dividend investing in New Zealand. And um, if you enjoy content like this, be sure to like and subscribe. I cover the New Zealand markets quite a bit. So if that's what you're interested in or other personal finance and investing matters, then be sure to like and subscribe. So um, this will be quite a long video. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Here we are. So dividend investing in New Zealand. So in this video, I'll be talking about the reasons for dividend investing, reasons against dividend investing. And we'll also have a look at uh, the criteria for scouting out dividend stocks that we want to buy. We'll also look at the different types of dividend stocks as well as constructing a dividend portfolio. And before we continue, this video is not financial advice, um, purely for entertainment purposes only. Yeah, if you need financial advice, do seek help from an authorized financial advisor. So firstly, let's take a look at the reasons for dividend investing in New Zealand. And the first one is that you can generate an additional passive income source. And this income source is very easy. You can start right away. Um, secondly, the reasons for dividend investing is that you want to grow your capital and income over time. If you put your money in a well-diversified dividend portfolio, capital will then grow over time, the principal amount that you put in, as well as the dividends that they pay out as the businesses that you own grow bigger. They have more profit from their operations and they pay these out to their owners. The last one is the tax implications, especially in New Zealand. So if you're a New Zealand um, tax resident, then there's no capital gains tax if shares are bought with the intention of collecting dividends. And secondly, we have an imputation credit system, meaning that dividends are not taxed twice. So the company already pays their taxes when they make a profit, then they pay the profit out to shareholders and shareholders essentially get a credit back for any taxes that the company already pays. Next, let's have a look at reasons against dividend investing. So the first one being that dividend Dividends alone do not make a company a good investment because there are dividend traps and that is basically meaning that dividends are not guaranteed. Dividend traps are companies that look attractive at the start because they paid a historically high dividend in the past, but then subsequently they don't pay that dividend maybe because the business is deteriorating and we can see examples of this for example Sky TV and Z Energy and these are companies whose businesses have deteriorated due to increased competition and so because of that they made less profit and they can't necessarily pay out as much dividends as as they have in the past and so their dividends are not guaranteed so if you're looking for a fixed source of income then dividends might not necessarily be the best idea for you and lastly usually dividend stocks don't grow as fast as growth stocks dividend stocks they pay out their owners and whatever's left they reinvest so by paying out their owners they don't usually have as much money left in the company to reinvest. So now what to look for in dividend stocks. Um, there's basically a whole list here that I'll talk about. And this is a criteria that you want to look for when you're looking to buy or scout for dividend stocks. Firstly, you want to have a look at their history of growing their dividends, whether they have been able to do that successfully over the long term. Long history could mean, you know, five to 10 years. That also links into the next one that I'll be talking about, and that's the future earnings growth. So firstly, we look at the past to see if they've been successful in growing their dividends. Then we look ahead to see, you know, whether the company is able to grow their dividends. Past performance doesn't necessarily indicate future performance, but it might provide us with a rough idea of how consistent they are and whether they'll be able to deliver in the future. Okay. Thirdly, they have to have some kind of economic moat, some kind of competitive advantage. If competitors are able to come in and steal market share, then this might mean that the profit will decrease and the amount of dividends that they can pay is reduced. They have to have low debt. So a company that has high debt have to pay out interest and um, whatever money that's left is only paid out to shareholders. So 
obviously you want less interest to be paid out and more profits to be distributed back to their shareholders and you want to also have a look at a low payout ratio a payout ratio is basically the proportion of how much profit they make is being paid out as dividends so a payout ratio is basically the headroom that uh, management has to you know increase their dividends in the future or maintain it okay so those are the five things that you'll be looking for when you want to buy a dividend stock now let's take a look at the different types of dividend stocks firstly we have the nz dividend etf stock ticker div so essentially if you don't want to bother about looking for those five things then i'll just say just buy this etf because this etf is made up of essentially 25 high yielding financial products so an etf is a basket of goods when you buy that basket you buy all of the stocks within that basket so when you buy this etf you're buying a combination of 25 high yielding financial products and this product has a gross dividend yield of 5.53 percent and a fund charge of 0.54% here so that means that you'll net about 5% a year so that's very good higher than um, most bank um, term deposits out there so if you don't want to bother about anything you don't want to pick individual stocks you want a uh, hands-free sort of investing style then just buy this etf next up we have the blue chip stock so these are your um, very large companies on the nzx they have a long track record they have a lot of the things on that list okay that that criteria that we have they have good economic mode they have um, the ability to grow their future earnings and it's very hard for competitors to come in and steal their market share and let's take a look at the port of tauranga in a closer detail so this is basically a graph of the Port of Tauranga's dividend history. So this is how much they've been growing their dividends. As you can see here from 1992, um, they paid almost nothing, just about one cent per share. And um, essentially now they've grown it to be about 18 cents per share. Um, plus another seven cents of special dividends. Okay, so the special dividends is basically what it is it's a special one um, it's not really expected by shareholders to get these special dividends every year but usually when the company has a surplus of cash and um, they don't really have anything to invest it in they just pay it out as a form of special dividends okay, so this is a way of the company paying out more dividends but making it unusual so shareholders don't necessarily expect the same um, special dividend next year as you can see, the blue and the orange um, dividends, blue being interim and orange being final, has been increasing steadily. So in the past 10 years, dividends have grown at a compounded rate of 8.8%, not including the special dividends. This company has a P ratio of 50. So a P ratio is a indicator of how expensive a stock is and to give you a rough idea, a P ratio of 50 means that a company has an implicit sort of return of 2%. So 100 divided by 50 is 2. In other words, 50 is not cheap. And it also means that the dividend yield is also quite low at 2.4% grossed up. Okay, so this Porto Tauranga is a very good indicator of, um, you know, what a blue chip stock should look like it should be able to grow its dividends over the long term as you can see if you bought it in 1992 you'd have done really well and also noting that there has been quite a lot of stock splits but i've adjusted for stock splits in this graph here okay so if you enjoy this graph this graph took me quite a few quite a few hours to make because i had to go back and collect all this data so if you enjoy that please give this video a like so the Porto Tauranga has a um, debt ratio of 27.5% and that's calculated by taking the net debt divided by net debt plus equity. So 27.5% is quite satisfactory and they have a payout ratio of 88.6. That's calculated by taking the net dividends per share divided by the 15 cents per share of um, profit per share. And if we include the special dividends, as you can see here, that payout ratio would increase even higher, okay? So that payout ratio really shows us that there's not much room left for management to increase the payout ratio to increase dividends. Future increases in dividends will have to come about from an increase in earnings per share. 
overall, um, you're probably not going to find a company that does well in all of the um, investment criteria. If you do, chances are that stock is going to be really expensive. As you can see, most of the blue chip stocks will have quite high PE ratios. And the reason for that being is that they usually have a good track record of dividend payments. They have a good moat and going forward, people expect them to pay dividends. And so a lot of people want to buy it, causing the share prices of these stocks to go up. Next up, we have the mid cap dividend stocks. Okay, so th these stocks have less of the items on the uh, investing criteria. They might not necessarily have as good of an economic moat. So, um, the Warehouse and Hallensteins, they are retail stocks and they don't have the same kind of economic moat as say like Auckland Airport or Porto Tauranga. Because they're cheaper, they have usually a higher dividend yield. So now let's take a look at Heartland Group. So I did the same for Heartland. I went back and tried to find all the information here. So Heartland Bank has a compounded growth of 12.2% per year over the past six years. And so that's higher than Porto Tauranga's 8% that uh, they delivered over the past 10 years. They have a lower P ratio than the Porto Tauranga of 50. They have a 14.4 uh, P ratio. And the dividend yield is significantly high as well at 7.3%. Heartland Group looks like a better deal than the Porto Tauranga as I've shown earlier. However, the reason for that is really because Heartland doesn't have as much as of an economic moat. Um, they haven't had the same um, track record and they're also operating in a different industry. The banking industry usually trades at a discount compared to the wider market. Just because a P ratio is low doesn't mean it's good. In terms of Heartland's net debt divided by net debt plus equity, I put NM there standing for not meaningful. And essentially what that means is because Heartland is a bank and they need to borrow money to have business. And so that would really um, skew the data, skew the numbers for that debt ratio. And so um, what the number you calculate wouldn't be as reflective and you can't necessarily draw comparisons to other companies. So we'll skip that one. And in terms of its payout ratio, it's 76.9%. Okay, so this payout ratio is slightly better than the Porto Tauranga's. Although it still is on the high side, ideally something below 50% is good. Um, but as you can see here, Heartland does better than Porto Tauranga in basically all of the metrics that we have. Next up, we have real estate investment trusts. These companies are basically um, trusts that own a whole bunch of properties and they lease it out. Examples of this include Goodman Property, PFI, Argosi, Key Property Group, and Precinct. Okay, so these companies pay out dividends usually four times a year. They pay these out quarterly and the dividends are very steady and you know the cash flow is relatively certain because what they do is when they get a tenant to occupy a building, these buildings usually have long-term contracts of you know might be the next five years and each year there might be an increase in the rentals based on CPI adjustments. So um, cash flow is almost certain and um, one thing to look out for when investing in these um, REITs is that you want to have a look at the occupancy rate, make sure that it's above 90% to be healthy. Anything below that might be an indicator that the building might be not in very good quality and, you know, um, whatever they have on the balance sheet might not necessarily reflect the true value of that property, okay? So that's a sign of impairment when the occupancy rate is significantly lower than the other um, competitors, okay? So that's real estate investment trusts, a very good source of steady income. So now let's look at constructing a dividend portfolio. So constructing a dividend portfolio, you want to build one based on your risk tolerance and tailor your dividend portfolio based on that. If you have a high risk tolerance, then you can have more of your portfolio allocated to individual mid cap stocks and then working down blue chip stocks, REITs and dividend ETFs. Okay, so for example, if you have a high risk tolerance, then you might have 60% allocated to mid cap stocks, 20% to blue chips, 10% to REITs and 10% to dividend ETFs. Obviously that 60% is not telling you to just put in one stock. You within that 60% allocation, you want to have a few uh, individual mid cap stocks. So for example, you might have a rule that 
um, you can't allocate more than 10% of one stock of your into your portfolio. So that means you need at least six mid cap stocks in here, right? So that is just an example. Med medium risk, you could have 20, 30, 30, 20. And low risk, you could have 10, 20, 30, 30. So if you have low risk, you want more of your products down on this end. And if you have high risk tolerance, then you want more of your portfolio on this end. So there's no hard and fast rule here. You just want to tailor according to your own needs and seek professional help as needed. Now, this is not financial advice purely for entertainment purposes only. So I hope you guys are all entertained. Okay, so final remarks. To end this video off, dividends are a great source of passive income. You want to find stocks that really meet that investing criteria that I talked about, the things to look out for in dividend stocks to ensure that you know you don't have to manage as much. Um, because the higher quality your portfolio is, the less management you have to do over it. And you know, you don't want to do too much work over it. So find good stocks that meet that investing criteria. Use different types of dividend stocks to build your portfolio to make sure that you get proper diversification. Depending on your needs, tailor your portfolio. And really start early for maximum compound interest. The earlier you start, the more time that your companies have to grow. And on a cost basis, your dividend yield would go up over time assuming that those companies continue to grow their profits, okay? This really brings this video to an end. If you enjoy content like this, be sure to like and subscribe. I hope this video is of value. Until next time, guys, take care.